Hello everyone. Welcome to Achievers IAS classes. Let's begin our discussion on the current events of 29th March 2018. The first issue in news is regarding the recent Supreme Court ruling on Harmer killings. The Supreme Court, as we saw in yesterday's news analysis, has come down heavily against honor killing and has issued various guidelines to the government to check honor killings. What we need to understand here is crimes committed in the name of defending honor of a caste, clan or a family may have their origin in India's caste system but there are other contributing factors as well like the entrenched social prejudices, feudal structures and patriarchal attitudes. These other factors cannot be eradicated overnight through law but a strong law and order approach is the first step in curbing such groups that seek to enforce such medieval notions. It is in this context one has to see the Supreme Court's judgment against the Ka Panchayats and the recent guidelines issued to deal with these feudal structures. This is not the first time that the Supreme Court has asserted that the life choices of individual adults, especially with regard to love and marriage, cannot be interfered by anyone and the current judgment too upholds the liberty and dignity of individuals and highlighted the need for preventive, remedial and punitive measures to deter honor killings. In this regard, High Courts of Punjab and Haryana as well as the Madras High Court have already laid down guidelines to the police on creating special cells and 24-hour helplines to provide assistance and protection to young couples and the recent verdict of the Supreme Court has gone a step further and has asked the police to establish safe houses for the couples under threat. Further, the court has also empowered the police to prohibit Kaap Panchayats or any such gatherings and effect preventive arrests. Towards the contention made by the Kaap Panchayats that they are only engaged in raising awareness about permissible marriages including inter-caste and inter-faith ones and against Sagotra marriages. The court has rightly highlighted that it is the job of the civil courts to do so, thereby prohibiting interference in the matrimonial choices of the individuals. With that, let's look into the next issue, which is regarding a petition filed in the Supreme Court to introduce the concept of criminal among the SCST communities to exclude the affluent members of these communities from accessing reservation benefits. The petitioner argues that it is this lack of percolation of reservation benefits to the poor and really backward sections of the SCST communities that has led to the social unrest, Naxalite movements and perennial poverty among them. In response, the union government has opposed the idea of creamy layer within the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes category against the petitioner's argument. Here we have to recall that in 1992, in the famous Mandel case, the Supreme Court upheld caste-based reservation for OBCs as valid and had directed the government to identify the creamy layer of OBCs to restrict reservation benefits to the poor and marginal sections among the OBCs. This judgment was confined only to the exclusion of creamy layer among the OBCs and not to the SCST communities. Therefore, we have to wait and watch what the final judgment of the Supreme Court will be in this regard. Till then, let's move on to the next issue, which is regarding the recent amendments to the National Medical Commission Bill by the Union Cabinet. The Union Cabinet has removed the provision for a bridge course for Irish practitioners to practice modern medicine, thereby leaving it to the state governments to take necessary measures for addressing and promoting primary health care in rural areas. Also, to the provision of an exit test in the National Medical Commission Bill, the recent amendments declare that the final MBBS examination to be held as a common examination across the country, thereby serving as an exit test called the National Exit Test or NEXT. Apart from these contentious issues, other amendments on fee regulation, the number of nominees of states and unit territories in the National Medical Commission also have been brought in to the proposed bill. For further details on the issue and the salient features of the bill, please go back and watch my previous news analysis video. Now let's move on to the next issue, which is regarding the recent observations made by the Supreme Court on setting up of an independent secretariat to improve the collegium system of appointment of judges. The court also said that corrective measures needed to be taken against post-appointment conduct or inappropriate performance of sitting judges. This development comes at a time when various high courts across the country 
have remained without permanent chief justices and as we have seen before there have been protests in several high courts like the one recently in Karnataka high court for the appointment of a permanent chief justice also the supreme court has pointed out how high court chief justices are appointed only for a few days before they retire thereby serving no purpose to the cause of justice delivery in this regard the court has stressed the need for a full time and independent body of experts to help in the appointment process as the immediate need for the collegium system whose absence could contribute to the denial of justice on that note let's look into the next issue which is on the recent rules on corporate governance introduced by sebi the securities and exchange board of india has tightened the norms of corporate governance by accepting most of the recommendations of the quota committee also it has strengthened the regulations for derivatives and algorithmic trading the new rules include the reduction in the maximum number of directorships expanding the eligibility criteria for directors of companies enhancing the rules of audit committees appointment of at least one independent women director and a time limit for holding annual general body meetings enhanced disclosures related to related party transactions and subsidiaries eligibility criteria for stocks to be included in the derivative segment etc further the regulator has also reduced the cap for expenses charged for each scheme of mutual funds and has also decided to initiate a public consultation process for a framework for listed companies that are in the middle of insolvency resolution process for further details on the new guidelines please go through the notes provided on our website with that let's look into the next issue which is regarding the bilateral meeting between india and japan as part of the india japan strategic dialogue which has been held annually since 2007 the two sides are expected to discuss on cooperation in the indo pacific and the next steps to be taken in the quadrilateral engagement between india japan us and australia given that japan is one of the largest investors in india particularly in infrastructure projects and the growing strategic convergence between the two countries particularly in groupings like the quadrilateral where the four participating countries share a common objective of countering chinese presence in the region the issue is very important from the examination perspective and will further look into it in the days to come the final issue in news today is regarding the talks to be held on the indus water treaty between india and pakistan this comes at a time when there is an upsurge in tensions between the two countries particularly over the loc crossfire and allegations of harassment of diplomats of both india and pakistan the meeting is in accordance with the treaty provisions which is considered to be one of the most successful inter country water sharing treaty with that i wrap up today's news analysis do share this content if you like it thank you for watching have a nice day.